Welcome to That's the Word, wholesome tales for the whole family. I'm Father James Yamauchi. Today's story, to Grandmother's House We Go. It was five o'clock in the morning, and the mother and her two sons were just finishing loading up the family car. They got their luggage together, then hopped in and drove off. They were going to see her mother and the boy's grandmother. Not too much happened on the road trip. The motor putted along as they passed through the rich countryside. They did make frequent stops along the way. Their car could not handle hills very well. When they got to one, the boys would get out and help push the car up the hill. The mother made a mental note to talk to her husband about having a car in the future that could better negotiate steep slopes. Partway through the trip, they had to stop for gas. Since the town did not have a gas station, they stopped in at the pharmacy. Even though stopping here to get gas was a bit unusual, the pharmacy did have the petrol they needed. These little interruptions did not slow them down too much. They made good time to grandmother's place. After a nice five-day visit, they drove back. There wasn't very much special about this road trip. As far as road trips go, it was fairly uneventful for the travelers. But there was a major reaction from the towns and villages they passed through. Most people at the time did not take road trips in their car because they did not own a car because cars had barely been invented. This road trip that the mother, Bertha, and her sons took was the first long-distance car drive ever. Her husband had invented this car and based on her feedback from this trip, added the lower gear for driving up hills. They traveled 65 miles each way and encountered many people who had never seen a horseless carriage. This trip gained even more notoriety for Bertha's husband, arguably the inventor of the modern automobile, the inventor named Carl Benz. And for this week, that's the word. This story was suggested by Vicky. Thank you very much, Vicky. And before John Peter continues, here is another edition of Facts, Not Opinions with John Peter. One of the things that Vicky gave us was a clip from the History Channel on Bertha Benz and her historic road trip. Now, what's very amusing about it is it's one of these History Channel recreations where you have the actors performing stuff and they're pantomiming things while the narrator narrates in a very serious and learned fashion. In this particular one, Bertha Benz jumps into the car and races away like a madwoman, yada, yada, yada. The comment section in the video, of course, kindly pointed out that they forgot her two sons who went along with her. 
<laughs> who she needed because they pushed the car up the hills when it couldn't make it up the hills. Though to be quite frank, I'm surprised that given it was a History Channel, they didn't put aliens into the back seat. That seems like something that the History Channel would do in their historic recreations. To be honest, it's been a long time since I've watched anything from the History Channel. You haven't occasionally checked out on the History Channel and seen like their ancient aliens shows? They have a lot of stuff where they say, how did this thing happen in history? Clearly, the answer is aliens. I <laughs> know. I have not seen that. I grew up liking the History Channel. I just haven't watched the History Channel in a long time. Oh, there was also this great clip where the guy is explaining this church. And he's talking about how the Knights Templar made it to the New World before anyone else. And he's pointing out in this church, you see Christ in the clouds. And then you see Mary Magdalene with the moon under her feet and 12 stars on her head. On the History Channel? On the History Channel. Yeah, they did tons of research on that, clearly. Yes. Obviously, dear History Channel, you have a fan in John Peter because he knows all this stuff, apparently. But it does remind me of another story <laughs> when you were saying that. I remember being one time in line when I was living in Rome to go inside St. Peter's Basilica, and there was a group of American tourists in front of me. They were on the tour of the Vatican. And so whenever I meet Americans, I would always chat with them. I remember one time in a conversation with the family, at the end of the conversation, they said, your English is very good. And I was very happy about that. I could hear the tour guide leading them into St. Peter's Basilica as they were passing through security. And the tour guide clearly said, we are now going into St. Peter's Basilica where Jesus Christ died on the cross. And the people looked back at me because they thought that was wrong. And it is wrong because our Lord died in Jerusalem, not in Rome. St. Peter's Basilica houses St. Peter, where St. Peter was crucified at the circus next to that necropolis. And I just said, yeah, that's not right. I hope you have a great tour and just <laughs> left them there. <laughs> <laughs> I've never told you this story. I must have. You must have at some point. But I don't remember it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Just to see the faces on those people. I don't know how much they paid for that tour. I love giving tours of St. Peter's. I would have given them one for free. Uh... So. <laughs> I do have another story to share that has to do with uh, Mercedes Benz. So we have a good family friend who works for Mercedes Benz. And she has come over and visited our family here at the States a uh, number of times. And I remember one time when she came visiting, she was talking about how there was the opportunity for people to work here in the States from Mercedes-Benz in this town where they have a Mercedes-Benz plant. And she was all excited to tell us about Tuscaloosa, Alabama. But the way she was talking about Tuscaloosa, you would think it is like New York or Los Angeles or Miami or some other place like that. And so I had to break it to her that there's a Mercedes plant in Tuscaloosa and that's about it. Yeah, there's a college campus. There's Mercedes Benz. Is that Auburn? No, or there's Alabama. Tuscaloosa. Oh, Tuscaloosa. No, I mean, oh, John Peter. What, what, what school is this? There's a couple of different big colleges in, in Alabama. Well, in Tuscaloosa, which one is in Tuscaloosa? You gotta make fun of me now. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? <laughs> I want to make sure I get it right. We got Auburn. Is it? Uh, I'm not going to say it now because we, we have just totally ostracized all of our Alabama listeners. University of Alabama, Bama. What is their team called, though? That's the thing I want to make sure. Roll Tide. Is it them? I'm pretty sure because it's. Uh, Alabama? Yeah, that's yeah. Alabama. Yep, there it is. The Crimson Cr Tide. Crimson Tide. Yep, there it is. So, yes. Neither John Peter or I. I knew there was a university. I knew that was a big deal. Auburn is located in Auburn. That kind of makes sense. So if you want to come to us for university or football news in the college world, please, um, we will refer you to someone else. But if you want to talk about history and the History Channel, talk to John Peter. 
Now it's trivia time. Da, 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 da. Last story's trivia question was, what was the name of the German Catholic mission in Paris? The answer is St. Boniface. This story's trivia question is, who was the Mercedes in Mercedes-Benz? That question again. Who was the Mercedes in Mercedes-Benz? If you think you know the answer, email us or contact us on social media and let us know. If you enjoy That's the Word, please share the word. You can see the story extras for this story at thunderrock.org, where you can see photos of Bertha Benz. Thunderrock.org is also where you can sign up for our weekly newsletter and where you can find our social links and our email if you have any feedback or story ideas like Vicky did. Thanks for listening and join us next Wednesday for another wholesome tale for the whole family.